So this week, the commissioner of the National Hockey League, or NIL, said they will evaluate whether to continue Pride Nights, where players are expected to wear rainbow-colored jerseys to show support for the LGBTQ community. He says, quote, players may not feel comfortable wearing the uniform as a form of endorsement. And he calls it a distraction. So once again, like a virus, wokeness invades an arena and creates unnecessary conflict. Ilya Labushkin was missing from warm-ups tonight. He sat out because he's concerned about his family's safety back in Russia. Sabres defenseman Ilya Labushkin was on the ice against the Canadians Monday night, but he didn't warm up with his team. He was concerned that wearing the Pride Night jersey would create problems for his family back in Russia. Labushkin didn't speak to the media, but a UB professor explains Russia has anti-gay laws, which ban same-sex marriage and criminalizes support for the LGBTQ plus community. Even simple acts like having a rainbow pin on your vest or a rainbow flag outside your house would be enough to warrant violence against you. People would attack you. And in some parts of Russia, that's actually enough to warrant you being killed. Pride night warm-up jerseys have caused controversy across the NHL. Some players have chosen to sit out of warm-ups, and even full teams abandoned those jerseys, including the New York Rangers, Chicago Blackhawks, and Minnesota Wild. Great things happen when individuals stand up for decency and morals and fight back against woke activists who are eager to impose sexual immorality on the rest of the world. A recent string of incidents has put an annual National Hockey League tradition in the spot. Like. It comes after some players declined to wear rainbow colored jerseys this season in support of the LGBTQ plus community. Chicago is the latest franchise at the center of this controversy. The team says its players will not wear P Pride Night themed jerseys for their pregame skate tonight against the Vancouver Canucks, the Blackhawks. At least four NHL players have boycotted Pride Night this season. Eric and Mark Stahl being the most recent before Florida's game versus Toronto on Thursday. Former Maple Leafs goalie James Reimer and Russian defenseman on the Philadelphia Flyers are also included in this list. The players cite their religious beliefs as reasons for not donning the Pride warm-up jerseys. In 1988, there was a meeting of 104 leading homosexual activists, and they strategized uh, as to how they could change the way people viewed homosexuals and homosexuality. 1989, this book was published. Um, and it, it, if you read it today, it reads like history. You, 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 you can't believe that it was actually published in 1989. Um, the moment, listen to what they say. This is them in the book, all of this is, this is them. As cynical as it may seem, AIDS gives us a chance, however brief, to establish ourselves as a victimized minority, legitimately deserving of America's special protection and care. This, therefore, is the question and the challenge. How can we surmount our insurmountable opportunity? How can we maximize the sympathy and minimize the fear? How, given the horrible hand that AIDS has dealt us, can we best play it? How do we take advantage of the AIDS crisis? Never, never let a crisis go to waste. The method. The campaign we outline in After the Ball, though complex, depends centrally upon a program of unabashed propaganda, firmly grounded in long-established principles of psychology and advertising, the two fields of these Harvard professors who wrote the book. Um, propaganda. By the way, this is what they say about propaganda. The three characteristics distinguish propaganda from other modes of communication and continue or, or contribute to its sinister reputation. Again, these are the authors writing. Their program is a program of propaganda. And now they're telling you why propaganda has such a bad reputation. Just a few things. One, it relies on emotional manipulation. Two, it uses lies, like one in 10. And three, it's subjective and one-sided. This is their strategy. In emotional manipulation, lies, and subjective, one-sided information. Listen to how James Reiner, one of the hockey players who recently boycotted the Pride Night, graciously explained why his faith in Jesus Christ is the reason for refusing to engage in the celebration of sin. For everyone, initiative the sounds of sharks have chosen to wear a jersey in support of the LGBTQIA plus community tonight um, 
for all 13 years of my NHL career. Um, I've been a Christian, not just in title, but in, in how I choose to live my life daily. Um, I have a personal faith in Jesus Christ who died on the cross for my sins and in response asked me to love everyone and, uh, and follow him. Um, I have no hate in my heart for for anyone. Uh, I've always strived to treat everyone with uh, respect and, and, and kindness. Um, in this specific instance, I'm personally choosing not to endorse something, um, you know, a sexual uh, identity or orientation that is counter to my convictions, which are based in the Bible, um, which I consider the highest authority in my life. And the LGBTQIA plus community, like all others, should be welcome in all aspects um, of the game of hockey. Um, so, but, but the counter side or, or the other side is, is that I just can't, you know, publicly or, or and personally um, in, endorse, you know, something that goes against, you know, my beliefs. Ironically, the ones who demand tolerance are the most intolerant. If you disagree with them, you are labeled homophobic and a bigot. Is it disappointing? Yes. Do I understand it? No, I don't understand how one issue has anything to do with the fact that you're not signing up for anything if you're wearing a pride sweater. You're saying you're welcome here. That's all you're saying. So I don't get it, and it is annoying. My answer is this. Wearing a jersey on a pride night, on a public stage as an NHL player, it's not subscribing to endorsing sexuality. It's not It's not somebody choosing to identify or align with. Its intention is to show inclusion, is to show allyship, is to show acceptance, not tolerance, acceptance of everybody. Sexuality isn't a choice. So to proclaim that somebody's belief system prevents them from treating all people equally with love and acceptance, that is a problem. It's not about forcing him to wear a jersey. It's about asking him for basic human decency. This is their strategy. And this is the most common strategy when you get into a debate with people about this issue. They can't make a logical argument, so they make an argument against you. This is how kids argue. They start losing an argument and it's, well, 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 so you ugly. <laughs> that means I got nothing left, okay? <laughs> Listen to this from Representative Barney Frank. I wouldn't want the homosexual marriage issue to go to the United States Supreme Court now because that homophobe Antonin Scalia has too many votes on this current court. Speaking about a sitting Supreme Court justice. And do you notice that when you disagree on the issue of same-sex marriage, it is not your opinion that's wrong, it's you. You are intolerant. You are a homophobe. It's your character. You as a person, you as a human being have been judged, not your position. I want you to notice this, that the way this is discussed is always in terms of ad hominem attacks. You as a person don't deserve to be in this discussion. James Reiner's boldness to be obedient to the Word of God should encourage other Christians to stand up for what they believe. God blesses those who honor His Word and willfully choose not to celebrate or participate in sinful behaviors. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3. To our friends in the LGBTQ plus community, don't be discouraged. We've had a couple of minor setbacks from a tiny number of players. We've made steady and spectacular progress in this space. 32 teams will have held by the end of the season a Pride Night. So even the teams here where we had some dissenters, the teams still held Pride Night. And with the religious reasons, it just doesn't compute for me. I was born and raised a Catholic. I don't see any conflict between my religious beliefs and the ability to say to the LGBTQ plus community, you're welcome here. That's all Pride Night is, is you're welcome in our building. They're not asking to sign any forms, not asking to join any churches. It's about saying this community is valuable and important, and we want to honor them. Please join us in our fight for the truth. 
please share our videos, subscribe, like, and comment. We appreciate your help. Isn't it fascinating how people who are most likely not Christians claim that their Christian faith allows them to support a lifestyle that the Bible clearly says is a sin? Well, following Mr. Brian's line of reasoning, we hereby ask the NHL to host a Christian night where all hockey players will wear a jersey with a cross and the phrase, Jesus saves. After all, it's a family night and no one will be asked to sign any form or join any churches. We simply want to tell everyone that Jesus loves them. Would Mr. Burke agree to have his team host a Christian night? We highly doubt it. It's astonishing how hypocritical these woke activists can be. They want to force their sinful lifestyle on everyone, but quickly criticize others who object or publicly express their genuine faith in Jesus Christ. Overall, we're continuing to see the fact that the message for the LGBTQ plus community is that they are not welcome. And it's you know, surprising and disappointing that players who previously did wear a jersey are now deciding that they are not wearing a jersey. And that's due to the precedent set um, previously by other players refusing to wear a jersey. However, Pride Nights are really, they're a means just to acknowledge that many individuals have had to hide their sexuality because society only views heterosexual relationships as normal. And that's why we always say coming out, right? Um, Pride nights are meant to move sexual diversity into the normal. And when franchises or individuals refuse to wear a jersey in the warm up, which, you know, typically are not even seen on a broadcast, you know, that sends a strong message that we still have a long way to go. One can't help but wonder what sexuality has to do with sports. There are numerous pride parades. Why can't they use those parades instead of hijacking sporting events to promote homosexuality? We are appalled at the direction America is going. It will not end well for our country if we don't repent and obey God's word. Like Brian Reiner, Eric and Mark Stahl refused to wear the Pride Night jerseys due to their Christian beliefs. They released the following statement. After many thoughts, prayers, and discussions, we have chosen not to wear a Pride Night jersey tonight, the brothers said in a statement released by the Panthers. We carry no judgment on how people choose to live their lives and believe that all people should be welcome in all aspects of the game of hockey. Having said that, we feel that by us wearing a Pride jersey, it goes against our Christian beliefs. We hope you can respect this statement. We will not be speaking any further on this matter and would like to continue to focus on the game and helping the Florida Panthers win the Stanley Cup. Another hockey player, Ivan Provorov, cited his religious belief for boycotting the Pride Night. I respect everybody's choices. My choice is to stay true to myself and my religion. That's all I'm going to say. Philadelphia Flyers defenseman Ivan Provorov boycotted his team's Pride Night and did not step out on the ice for warm-ups before a recent NHL game. As expected, he received sharp criticisms from tolerant LGBTQ activists. Three things, technically. Provorov also spoke to the media after the game and, and echoed what Tortorella said, so I didn't feel the need to run it. Um, this happened in baseball last year with the Tampa Bay Rays. There were five members of the Tampa Bay Rays who wouldn't wear a patch supporting gay rights. Mm -hmm. And Major League Baseball didn't do much. It was a story for a little bit. The theme from the National Hockey League is hockey is for everyone. Okay. The theme is not hockey is for everyone, dot, 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 unless you don't believe in gay rights, then do whatever you want. I think you find the Flyers a million dollars for this. I'm not kidding. Figure this out and stop offending people on nights where it's not about that. It's supposed to be about inclusivity. The National Hockey League need to attack this and figure this out. Because what I heard last night was offensive and didn't make any sense because for instance, if that was a military night, okay, right. if anyone in Canada or in the States on a military appreciation night wouldn't wear a jersey pregame, do you have any idea the uproar that would have happened on that? Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea the backlash? Do you have any idea what happened on social media? It's, it's, it's ridiculous what would well, have happened. It was just a minute ago we were talking about the uproar that was happening with FIFA fever, where it's, if you were seen with so much as yeah. a rainbow anywhere, you had to fear for your life, imprisonment, or death. Yeah. Seriously. So, and now here we are. And one last point. Nothing scares me more than any human being who says, I'm not doing this because of my religious beliefs. Because when you looked at people's lives, you normally say that publicly, you'd throw up at what you saw. You would throw up at what you saw. And I have seen that a million times in a lot of different ways. So don't, don't give me that. 
with respect. Don't give me that because no one's perfect. All right. Don't tell me. Don't don't feed me the religious beliefs line. And all of a sudden, the NHL is going to back off this. The National Hockey League today needs to find that organization a million dollars and reevaluate how they support gay rights. Because because that is insulting. That is the number one trending topic in Canada. That is insulting what happened in Philadelphia. And if the NHL is serious about this, they say they are. We'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see how serious they are today. But that whole thing was mishandled. And, I, and I, part of me couldn't believe it. Part of me could, considering how the NHL sometimes handles things. And it's too important, and that's why you're continuing to talk about it, because you're not just going to brush it under their rug. Well said, Dean. Ivan Provorov can get on a plane any day he wants and go back to a place where he feels more comfortable, take less money, and get on with his life that way. If it's that problematic for him. And he's been in North America for a long time. He played in the Western Hockey League. He's now been in Philadelphia for many years. If this is that much of a problem for him to maybe assimilate into his group of teammates and in the community and here in this country, that's okay. Listen, you can feel any way you want. But the beauty is, if it bothers you that much, there's always a chance to leave, go back where you feel more comfortable. I understand there's a conflict of sorts going on over there. Maybe get involved. So... If Christians who play sports were as bold as James Reiner, Eric and Mark Stahl, and Ivan Provorov, there would be less imposition of LGBTQ ideology on players. Our world, especially the United States, is heading in the wrong direction. Everything good is demonized. May the Lord help us to remain steadfast and be the light that shines brightly in this dark world. Amen.